Yes, I know, I know. We're going for it. Let's talk the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl matchup. So, the Super Bowl, if you didn't know, is this Sunday, 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 this Sunday, February 11th, between the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, how do I want to go about this? Um, well, first things first, the NFL playoffs this year were, I'm not going to lie, Luster, um, they were okay. You had to give them a rating. I'd probably rate the, the, the NFL playoffs this year like a 7 out of 10. Some of them, they're pretty average. They weren't like any like super crazy games. I mean, the Kansas City Buffalo game was really good. Um, any other games that were really awesome? The 49er Lion game was pretty sick. I guess the Packer 49er game was also pretty nice too. The 49ers definitely had some pretty nice games this year. Uh, the Rams Lions game was good, but like none of the games were like, whoa, awesome. I, I don't know, a couple years ago, I forget what playoffs it was and what year. I remember almost all the games were, were very, very close and some teams had nice runs and, and whatnot, but I, don't know, I feel like this year didn't really have a lot of pizzazz to it. Maybe that could be because the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Jiu-Jitsu playoffs were pretty okay. I'm just really, 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 really hoping a very close, fun, uh, Super Bowl matchup. Because I'm not really rooting for any of these teams. Now, what's interesting about these two teams, if you didn't know, uh, yes, I did pick the 49ers to win the Super Bowl at the uh, beginning of my NFL playoff bracket predictions video, which is kind of nice that that team is in the Super Bowl. Maybe I'll be correct there. But also, at the start of the year, maybe if you go all the way back, you can find me talking about it somewhere. I actually picked the Kansas City Chiefs for a pretty decent amount of time for weeks and weeks and weeks, saying that I think they're going to win it again. So, the team that I picked at the start of the year, the team that I picked at the start of the playoffs, are both in the Super Bowl. So, I guess I big-brained the whole situation in my head. And I was actually pretty close. That's actually pretty funny. But, um, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about, Jake, what's your pick now? What's your pick now? Have your, has your pick swayed at all? We'll get into that. Let's take a look at the matchup. Head on head. Um, head to head. Head on head. Head to head. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, taking a look at the stats side by side. Of course, the 49ers have been such a dominant team this entire year. There was a little skid, um, skid throughout the, uh, NFL season that they had that kind of worried people. They fell in like the power rankings and, and a lot of people's eyes and mind, they were kind of on the iffy side. A lot of it was due to um, a lot of different things. I think the major one was probably um, the fear of Brock Purdy and not really knowing if he was truly up to that sort of like star level as other quarterbacks that we talked about earlier in this end of a playoff run. Lamar Jackson, the Patrick Mahomes of the world. Can Brock Purdy at least play not up to their level, but enough to get the rest of their team to win. Now we almost saw that that was the case against the Detroit Lions and really almost lost them the game. Now they did have a crazy comeback. That defense really locked in and the Fortnite came back and won that game. But in my honest opinion, they do that against the, the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to lose 1000%. So definitely going to need to up that offense. Brock Purdy is going to play maybe on a different level that we've never seen him on before, and, you know, I want to say, you know, it's on his shoulders, but Brock Purdy is the biggest X-factor this entire game. I'll say it here first. I know Patrick Mahomes is going to be Patrick Mahomes. Travis Kelsey has his girl in the stands of Taylor Swift, and it's just so good offensively and defensively. If Brock Purdy has a bad game, this is going to be a blowout. If Brock Purdy has a great game, I can really see the 49ers taking this game. So I think the big X factor in this game is your boy Brock Purdy. Um, anyways, I don't know why I went on that ramble of Brock Purdy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, obviously all these stats lean towards the 49ers because they did have a pretty great year this year. I wish I could see statistics. Statistics. Statistics just based off of 
first season. I think those are two different styles of games, at least for the NBA it is, and I think for the NFL it's also kind of a different game. And also, it's been two weeks since we've seen NFL football, which could be a good thing, or could be a bad thing. I know the Kansas City Chiefs, at the end of the year, was kind of fumbling around uh, at the end of the regular season. Once the playoffs started, though, you really saw them kick it into a different gear, and uh, I called it, I called it at the start of the playoffs, do not be surprised if Kansas City goes far, do not be surprised if Kansas City goes far, and they're kind of the underdog against the Dolphins, they're the underdog against the Bills, um, a lot of people didn't want to see them go against the Ravens and, and get past them, I picked the Ravens to beat them, so I was even wrong there, but I said don't be surprised if they made a run, and they made a run, and now they're here, so it's also pretty impressive, of course they have Patrick Mahomes and a very stacked team, but anyways, still kind of impressive to see that there, but you know, it's been two weeks since we've seen any of them play, will there be rust, will the fire that these teams have built up and built up and built up uh, diminished already? I guess we'll have to see, pretty interested to see what they, what they do here. Let's see here. Okay, let's take a look at some betting odds, because I know you guys really like me talking about that kind of stuff. So, uh, I guess just the be-all, end-all, the money line. Who will win the game? Who are people betting their money, their hard-earned money, on who they think will win the game? As of right now, um, the money line is actually to Kansas City, which actually Kansas City is opening the game, at least as of right now. As the favorite, a two-point favorite, um, with 62% of the bets taking it to Kansas City, um, which is interesting. Um, obviously, this is kind of like a toss-up game. A lot of people are just betting money just to bet money, and I guess people are picking Kansas City. Now, I have heard that a lot of people are just betting on Kansas City because the NFL loves, 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 loves. Kansas City, which um, I guess could really be an interesting way to think about it. Sorry, I'm getting a controller to do some sounds with. They love Taylor Swift. They love the Travis Kelsey angle. They love the legend. They're trying to build up a Patrick Mahomes and of course this whole, you know, Kansas City fiasco that a lot of people are thinking about and hating on. It could be a real deal and people think rigging games, which I keep hearing about and talking about all the time on my ASMR live streams. People truly think that, and I think people are just betting money on Kansas City because they think that if it were rigged for them to win. And I guess in that sort of, in, in that sort of meaning, I guess it would be kind of smart to, to, to bet on them to win. Um, I guess it's the more safer pick, and again, the 49ers do have the better all-around team, but is X factors again, like we just talked about, are definitely on the 49ers for them to win. And the Kansas City Chiefs just play their re regular brand of, of football. They have a great chance of winning. They have already in the GOAT conversation uh, quarterback. They have a great offense. Their defense can be shaky sometimes, but sometimes it can be very good, like in this NFL playoff run that they just had. It's been very good, actually. Um, they held you know, the Ravens to 10 points, which is pretty impressive, and, uh, I don't know, man, it's very, it's very interesting, but again, it's been two weeks since we've played football, has that fire diminished, we're gonna have to wait and see, but the people are definitely betting their money on the Kansas City Chiefs to win it all, and then some other things, like total points, um, let's see, the over-under right now is for 47 and a half, so will there be 48 points scored in this game, yes or no? 48 points, it's 24 points per team. It's a little bit over three touchdowns each. Whoa. Um, I'll bet the under. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a defensive game there. Um, I'll bet the under. I think I'd bet the under. A lot of people are betting the over. Actually, people are going to think it's a high-scoring game for the Super Bowl. I hope it is. I hope it's not a very boring game. Um, those are the worst kind of Super Bowls. And then the other one is the spread. Will San Francisco win by more than two points? Or will Kansas City avoid losing by two or more points? And of course, people are betting Kansas City to win. So obviously, Kansas City is going to avoid losing by two or more points. So obviously, they have a pretty big lead on that bet as well. But yeah, um, Alette, uh, is that what it's called? Alette or Allegiant? Allegiant. Allegiant Stadium in, in Las Vegas. Fortnite versus Cheese, Jake Baller. Who do I have officially the last chance to pick a winner? Oh man. You know, I 
this. I don't really have like a team to really root for here. I just want to see a close game. I don't really care who wins. I don't have like a hate for. Oh, sorry about that car driving by. I don't have like a hate for any of the teams here. I know both these teams are not very popular, but a lot of people are picking the 49ers to win just because they don't want to see Kansas City win because of, again, Taylor Swift, the view on Patrick Mahomes, the view on this franchise, the cheating allegations, rigging allegations. People just don't like Kansas City. I don't. I mean, I. I don't care. Like, I, I don't have a hatred towards them. I don't think Taylor Swift is like a bothersome for me. Like, I don't care that Taylor Swift is there or not. A lot of people apparently do. But uh, I just want to see a close game. But I'm going to ride with the team that I started this playoff run with. And hopefully it is right just so I don't look stupid. I'm picking, I'll stick with the 49ers. I, I, I like Brock Purdy. I think he's a cool guy. I think he's kind of a, a cool story in the NFL. Kind of an underrated sort of underdog. And I think it's pretty cool that he's... And the Super Bowl now, the biggest days of all going up against this generation's Tom Brady, maybe even surpassing Tom Brady if he wins a, 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 a Super Bowl ring this year. I'm surpassing him at this stage in their careers. He would probably be better than Tom Brady currently. Well, Tom Brady in this current state of his career, if that makes any sense. Um, so, that had been chicken, but it's a new, new Super Bowl winner. So, I like saying new people win. It's kind of nice. So, I'm going to stick with the 49ers. I think that's not the craziest uh, pick. Um, so, when it comes to um, the NFL Super Bowl, there are actually some interesting things to also talk about, which is some more uh, betting stuff, which for some people might be kind of boring it to talk about. But this is actually kind of interesting because you can actually bet on a lot of different things in the Super Bowl besides like, oh, number of catches for a player or number of touchdowns blah 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 in the nfl super bowl you can actually bet on the color of the gatorade that will be poured on the winning coach you can bet if travis kelsey will propose to taylor swift you can bet on if uh the halftime performer uh, will mess up at some point in time in their performance. You can actually bet on so many little tiny things that I think is actually kind of funny. Um, I kind of want to take a look at it now. Um, Super Bowl. Let's see. Um, what are the most popular non-game related bets that you can make? Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the coin toss. The coin toss is another really good bet. Well, let me talk about the other ones first. Um, yeah, you can bet if uh, Travis Kelsey will uh, propose to Taylor Swift or not. Um, if I was making a bet, I would definitely bet no. That would definitely That's definitely not going to happen. But obviously, if you bet, if they do propose, you're going to make a lot of money because I think that's the under right now is... Uh, or I guess the non-favorable bet is that they are going to propose, which that's definitely not going to happen, but that'd be wild. Oh my god, could you imagine? Definitely not going to happen. Uh, you can bet on if the halftime performer will mess up or not. I'm trying to think if that happens really often. I don't think so. I mean, of course, there's like a Janet Jackson fiasco that happened, but I don't think that anything like that's going to happen with Usher, which I'm really excited to actually to see what happens during that halftime show. Of course, I wonder if you can actually bet. I would actually make a bet that Taylor Swift performs at some point in time during the halftime show. That's that's something that I would actually bet money on. It'd be kind of funny. Um, and then also the color of Gatorade dumped the the, the color the color the color the color. Actually, the coach gets a nice big bath in a, a color of Gatorade. And I think the last time that I checked, the uh, winningest uh, bet you can give is lime, like yellow or green, Gator like that limey color of Gatorade. Apparently that's the winning bet right now. Um, you can bet blue. 
seasons so far. I went, you know, and graded their seasons. Uh, which, by the way, thank you guys so much. That video actually did pretty well. It did pretty well. Well, whatever pretty well is uh, nowadays on the channel. Um, whatever that means. <laughs> it did pretty okay. Um, thank you guys so much for supporting that video. But nothing really has really changed since then. Um, not like anything big time or major. I already talked about like Joel Embiid's injury and all-star snubs and stuff like that, which we will talk about also in, the, in this video, talking about the all-stars and things like that. So, um, let's get on with it. So for the Eastern Conference, uh, the Celtics are still number one, but we have a new challenger in the mix at the number two seed of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes, Cleveland is the number two seed, ladies and gentlemen, at least at the recording of this video, with the Bucks at three, the Knicks at a four. So the Knicks, Bucks, and Cavs all battling for that number two spot. They're all a half a game away from each other, and then Boston has a five-game lead above them, which, whoa. Man, man, the difference of a two seed to a four seed is a vast difference, especially when it comes to standing-wise, because obviously the four seed, you face the one seed in the second round, the two, three seed, you face each other in the second round if both the, the top teams make it through the next round so man trying to avoid that four seed and not face boston in the second round is probably pretty important to a lot of teams maybe your team doesn't care maybe you don't care about boston how good they are sure whatever but usually you want to avoid the number one seeded team in your conference uh, when you're going into the playoffs and getting that two or three seeds gonna be super important so seeing these teams ramp it up and cleveland i think they were like a seven six seed for quite some time ramping all the way up to be a two seed is pretty wild then we have the six or that five pacer six heat at seven orlando at eight uh the bulls at nine hawks ten nets seven raptors twelve i see nets seven nets eleven raptors twelve hornets thirteen Wizards fourteen and fifteen detroit pistons so yeah, Cleveland as a two seed, uh, wild. I didn't even know that was happening, but they have the most wins for a win streak currently in the NBA, and uh, they've been going pretty strong, which um, makes sense. They have Donovan Mitchell, who's arguably the best shooting guard in the NBA. They always have a best pretty. They always have. A, I don't know why I said best. They always have a pretty good um, interior presence with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley and. Yeah, they've been getting it done, and obviously Garland still being there, being a very good point guard, not getting all-star break this year, but it is what it is, the, the all-star game, and just all-star in general is just so hard to make it, especially for a guard nowadays, it's wild. Um, anything I really want to talk about first, I mean, I guess we could talk about the Sixers and Joel Embiid, um, obviously they are currently right now fifth in the NBA's Eastern Conference. They only really have like a three, four game lead uh, above the Orlando Magic for the eighth spot and currently right now are on a two game losing streak and I think Joel Embiid's probably going to be out to the playoffs. Um, obviously, you hope to God he can come back for the playoffs. <laughs> you, it, it, I, I could definitely see a situation where maybe the Sixers go just completely in the wrong direction and they just tank the entire season to all but he doesn't play at all this year and they just wait until next year which i mean yeah, i guess if you're thinking about this in the long term it might be like the best option just giving joel Embiid almost a, i won't say almost a year off but like what like six months eight months off um of, of playing basketball which for joel and would be probably pretty beneficial for his nba career because man all, we, all, we all know joel Embiid is just such a you know, he drags his body through the NBA season because he is just so heavily demanded as a 76er to do everything for them, obviously being an MVP winner last year. Man, if he was fully healthy this year, he could have ran away with another MVP this year just for how dominant he's been. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just sucks. And I could really see the Sixer team going in the completely wrong direction and just not being able to catch up. I think what will happen, though, what I would bet on, I guess, is that they're probably going to be like a six seed, a seven seed, and Joel Embiid is going to try to make a return, and we can see what can happen with that. 
I don't know if it's been confirmed or not. Sorry if I'm like yapping about this and Joel has already been confirmed to be out for the year. But I, if I can remember, I think they're tr he's trying to make a comeback at some point in time this year. Which is, which is interesting to think about. But that's my take. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this team is, you know, a, a nine seed or whatever and just, they kind of just whiff all the season. It's kind of just whatever they lose in like the playing game and it is what it is. So don't be so surprised if you see that. Um, also, um, the Knicks, Julius Randle being hurt, still kind of keeping up with that pace, which is really cool. Um, I don't want to talk a trade talk just yet. I just want to talk about the, the, key, the team's current states. But they're definitely in this sort of rumor mill of making sort of a, an adjustment during the uh, trade talks. And yeah, I guess the Milwaukee Bucks losing that two uh, seed gap that they had for quite some time. They were even closing in almost on getting the one seed in the East, which that team was just kind of everywhere. And oh, this is my last piece of gum. Oh, man. Uh, that team kind of having a sort of struggle with whatever they're trying to do there. Um, I know Dame just recently got hurt, which I know for some people, they're saying that Damian Lillard is the reason why the Bucks are struggling so much, which if you think that, I think I saw a stat somewhere that I think Dame is like, I think the Bucks are like, they've only lost like one game when Damian Lillard scores like over 30 points, and I think they have like a record, like some crazy record when, you know, Dame is playing at a certain pace, like how good they are. So, um, if you think Dame is the reason why they're bad, you're very funny. <laughs> I, I really hope you're joking, but, um, of course, it's a new team, a new situation. Apparently, there's like a lot of stuff going on in his personal life too, which um, I guess a lot of, of us take into a, uh, not into an account. I mean, you look at what that, what's happening to Clay Thompson in Golden State, and he just is having just he's going through it too. Whatever, it's like a personal thing or just a bad time in NBA basketball for himself. Some players just can't get out of a rut, but. I think he will eventually. It's not like he's having a bad season. He's still having, like... It's funny that this is a bad season for gaming. Lillard, but he's averaging, like, 26 points and, like, 6 assists, 7 assists. Like, he's having a very good year, but... Um, and there's still, you know, a, a, a potential two-seed in, the, in their conference. Like, it's funny that Milwaukee Bucks fans are, like, freaking out over this season when they're still probably going to end the year, knock on wood, they're probably going to end the year as the two seed, which I know for Bucks fans are always used to being the one seed, but now that they're the two seed, it's the end of the world, apparently. <laughs> it's very funny. You know, the Bucks are going to win the title this year, probably not, but next year I think they'll be able to build off this a little bit more, and I think next year will be a better year for the Milwaukee Bucks, which again, this year is not even bad for them. Um, the Miami Heat are finally going in the right direction. I know they had like a pretty big um, losing streak there for a little bit of time. Um, let me actually take a look here and see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh yeah, they had like what, like a seven game losing streak, eight game losing streak from um, January 17th to January 29th. Whoa. They lost all those games, which is pretty rough. They're recently now uh, three and one, which is pretty good. Um, although they played teams like the Magic and the Wizards, which I guess the Magic are a pretty decent team nowadays, so it's not too bad. They did lose the, to the Clippers, which man, the Clippers are a team we're going to be talking about for sure in this video. But they're definitely looking like they're getting the feet under them, which is definitely a good sign because they definitely need to do that. And uh, yeah, anything else really going on in the East? Um, Pacers are still trying to find themselves. I think I can I could really see them surpassing the Sixers in the standings. And the bottom of the East is still the bottom of the East. Not too surprising there. We do have the Hawks finally making some sort of run, uh, finally pushing themselves into the playing scenario. And as the way they're playing, it wouldn't surprise me at the end of the season as an eight seed, uh, maybe even sticking their way into the playoffs due to the playing scenario that they have going on. Don't be sleeping on the Hawks. I think they can, I think they can sneak into the playing game. Uh, oh yeah. Um, Scotty Barnes on the Toronto Raptors is the, I think he's either the Randall or the Joel Embiid replacement this year. Shout out to Scotty Barnes. Actually kind of impressive. Is that who I would pick? Maybe not, but hey, that's, shout out to Scotty Barnes. He's going to be an all-star this year for the first time, and uh, yeah. Uh, right now, currently, the Hornets have a eight-game losing streak, which... I pray, I pray for the rookie that gets drafted to Charlotte. Uh, if they get the number one overall pick, that's going to be crazy. But then again, Brandon Miller has been doing
doing pretty well. Isbin has been doing pretty well over there in Charlotte right now. Um, if you missed it, actually, I don't have that card with me, but I actually got in my most recent, which by the way, that video did really bad, <laughs> in my most recent uh, NBA video, I did a pack opening, like an IRL pack opening, and I actually got a rookie Brandon Miller card, so uh, I'm going to be really pushing for Brandon Miller to have a very good career, because I need that card to be worth something. Not really, but that would be kind of cool. And then the Pistons and the Wizards are in a, a race to be the worst team in the NBA, which is wild because the Pistons have only won at six games this year, but the Wizards have only won at nine games. There's only a three-game gap between uh, the Pistons and the Wizards. That's cr <laughs> like that is crazy. Actually, how close the Wizards are making themselves to be between them and, and the Pistons to be the worst team in the NBA, not even just in their own conference. Oh my god. Anyways, let's go on to the Western Conference, which for the Western Conference, the number one, number two, number three, and number four seeded team. Yes, yeah, so one, two, three, and four team. There's basically no gap. I think there's not even a half a game gap between the four teams at the top of the Western Conference. That is, I don't think I've ever seen that before, ever in my life. I'm not kidding. If the Denver Nuggets, who are in fourth right now, win their next game, and all the other teams lose, they are the one seed. One to four, that big of a jump. Currently, as we're talking about this right now, the Clippers, yes, the LA Clippers, a team that I think were at one point I was like a seven seed, six seed, have <laughs> now overtaken the top teams, and is currently the number one team in the NBA Western Conference. We'll talk about that in a second. Number two are the Thunder. Number three are the Timberwolves. Number four are the Denver Nuggets. Again, there's a basically a no gap game between any of those teams. Then we have a big gap of the five seeded Sacramento Kings, Phoenix Suns, Pelicans at seven, Dallas Mavericks at eight, uh, Lakers at nine, Jazz at ten, Warriors eleven, twelve we have the Houston Rockets, thirteen uh, Memphis Grizzlies, fourteen Blazers, and fifteen San Antonio Spurs. That is just insane. Like, again, I don't think I've ever witnessed that ever in my life where a team can go to being, you know, the number one team in their conference or, you know, battling out with the five seed in, in, in the first round, which is pretty wild to think about. And I don't know. Definitely when I take a look at those top four teams in the West, there are two teams I'm pretty confident in. There's two teams that are definitely big X factors, and of course, you probably know if you watch my channel how I feel about young teams making it into the playoffs and how they play in the playoffs. Denver and the Clippers. Those are teams I am absolutely terrified, terrified to play in the playoffs. If you're a team that's not them, those are the teams that in my opinion you really have to look out for. And what's actually kind of funny, is like kind of like with the, the NFL talk we just had, at the start of the year, those were the two Western Conference teams I said that would be my biggest picks, pickums, pickums, picks, pickums, pickums to make it out of the West with the Clippers in Denver, and I guess also Phoenix, but it was Denver and the Clippers at the start of the year. Obviously, I lost complete faith of the Clippers at some point in time this year, but seeing them back in this situation is actually kind of impressive. And then, of course, you have uh, the Timberwolves, who are a team that are not necessarily a young team or inexperienced. They just haven't been at this sort of level. I think I, I, I think this might be their best season maybe ever. Like, this might be the best uh, statistical season ever. I've seen stats of them being ranked as one of the top defensive teams in a, a very long period of time. I don't want to know. I don't know if it was all time, but they definitely have one of the best defensive teams that we've seen in this, like, era of basketball. I think that's what the statistic was. Which is wild to think about, but they have some good defenders, a lot of scrappy play, and they just have a good scheming of just defense. They can switch, they can play big, they can play small, they can kind of do it all. Oh, then you have the Thunder, who are just playing off of pure talent and instinct, which can get you pretty far, but again, the, the playoffs are a different animal, they're a different breed, they're a different craziness, and teams that are just made for it are made for it, and teams that are inexperienced at it and don't know what to think or see or what happening 
regular season. They come to the playoffs and they can barely get past the first round. You know what I mean? It's 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 really tough to really face off these more, you know, rugged teams. Obviously, back then, I think it was the Golden State Warriors knocking them out. And then uh, you saw, like, the, the Kings last year with the Golden State Warriors being knocked out there. And then the Lakers beating Memphis in the playoffs last year. Like, just because you have a good regular season record and you're a young team doesn't mean you're, you know, it's going to happen for you guys. Anything can happen. Which, of course, the Thunder can... I can see them making the NBA Finals and it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. But also, there's a part of me that's just... It's like, man, if they get matched up against Denver or the Clippers... I mean, maybe even Phoenix, if they really get rolling, which they have been, uh, beating the, some of the better teams in the NBA. They just beat Milwaukee not that long ago. And uh, I just wouldn't know who to bet on or what to think really about it. Oh, my eye is really itchy right now. Um, so, yeah. Although those teams are really good in the regular season, we definitely do need to think about what could happen in the playoffs. But, yeah, the Clippers with James Harden are definitely on a roll. And they've just been streaking. Like, they have just been going on, like, a five-game win streak. They'll lose a game here or there. They'll go on, like, a six-game win streak. They'll lose a game here or there. They've just been streaking this entire time. And, honestly, that's all due to James Harden. And and, 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 their, and his playmaking ability on this team is just making this team so astronomically better and that's no offense to Russell Westbrook but you know Russell Westbrook isn't a a creator when it comes to playmaking he's a, a finisher when it comes to playmaking you know he'll make the right pass at the right time to finish a play James Harden is more of a, of a maestro he's more of a, of a playmaker than uh, uh, most people give him credit for he is in my opinion probably a point guard that like he's his most um I guess best um way to play James Harden is to have him with the ball in his hand, obviously, but um, he's been just been playing great with the ball in his hand and really just creating uh, opportunities for this team, and of course, Paul George has been playing a lot, knock on wood, he's an all-star, Kawhi Leonard has been playing a lot, knock on wood, he's an all-star, and the rest of the team, is, as we all know, has always been so deep, just a matter of time for this to happen. Uh, the Phoenix Suns have been playing pretty well. They're only a couple of games. Well, actually, they're tied right now for fifth, so that could be an interesting matchup in the first round if they get up there. Um, the Pelicans are staying afloat. Dallas, the Lakers, they're all kind of staying afloat in that uh, seven to nine range. Um, I'm not really impressed with any of those teams, really, um, which kind of sucks. Um, you know, Lakers have just been so wishy-washy. They're obviously a team that's going to be in a lot of trade talk and whatnot, which I will be doing an entire NBA trade talk video. Uh, I think probably on Friday. You guys are going to see that the day after the start of the NBA trade deadline. If there are any big-time moves or even just small moves, I'll be making a video uh, about it. They're definitely a team that needs some help. Um, and then the Warriors, of course, are still just barely keeping afloat. It's been really tough to sort of see what they've been going through and and Steph Curry, man, he's been going through it. Someone needs to check on Steph Curry because he's been having a rough time. Um, Memphis right now, I think, has the most loss. Yeah, they are, they're on a six-game losing streak. They have the, the most losses. They're in the Western Conference and the second most in the entire NBA. So, again, without Jaw, really any other star players kind of makes sense. And then Portland, of course, people want to hear me talk about Portland. Um, you know, they, they suck, obviously. Um... Uh, Scoot has been playing a lot better. He's been having, you know, a couple of 30 point seven six assist games. He's definitely been looking really good. Um, Shaden Sharp, though, if you guys didn't see, Shaden Sharp is actually going to be out for the rest of the year. Um, he has, uh, like, a, a, an abdominal injury, which he has, again, another Portland player having core injury surgery. Dame Nas or Nazir Little, uh, Gary Payton the second when he was on the team. They're just, why are there so many players that are having this, like, core injury with Portland Trailblazers? I don't know. Portland has always been really bad with injuries and injury bugs and everything. They, you know, no offense, I'm not trying to, you know, get rid of people's jobs or anything like that, but, like, there has to be an underlining thing of like, hey, maybe our medical staff is maybe not the best at looking for players and how healthy they are and what we're doing is really right for them. Because for some reason, Portland is just so dog duty with injuries. I feel like our players get injured all the time. Jeremy Grant just got recently. Obviously, Robert Williams had a season injury. I don't know. This The medical team for Portland sucks. I'll say it first. But uh, yeah, she sharps out for the year and yeah. 
yeah, they're probably not going to be making a lot of trades because, um, because of that reason, they need to keep a lot of their team together because now they don't really have a, a player to look forward to coming back into the rotation. Shaden Sharp is going to be out for the entire year, and uh, they're going to have to keep Malcolm Brogdon, who is a player that's going to be in the trade talks a lot, which, man, I'm already like almost like 50 minutes into this video, and I haven't even talked about trades, which I kind of wanted to do, but I, I guess I didn't want to talk too much about trades because I'm doing an entire video about it anyways. Anyways, 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 anyways. Um, yeah, Malcolm Brogdon on Portland, he's not going anywhere anymore, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's the start of the trade talk, um, let's see what we can see, oh, actually, this is a, a good TikTok idea, or a, a YouTube short idea, there's a top 100 highest paid athletes of 2023, I'm definitely gonna make that into a YouTube short, thank you, uh, Bleacher Report, that's why I watch you guys. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. As we are currently sitting here, um, the biggest star, if you want to call him a star, <laughs> in trade rumors right now is, of course, DeJounte Murray. Now, Zach Levine was there for a while, but um, he just recently had season-ending uh, surgery as well. Apparently, there's a rumor going around that some underwhelming teams were making the best offers for Zach Levine. Teams like Detroit, San Antonio, um, uh, I think Atlanta was also kind of in the mix. Teams that I think Zach Levine was definitely not wanting to go to. I think Zach Levine wants to go to a more winning situation. Um, are making the best offers. And apparently, there was a deal that maybe was getting close to being done with one of these underwhelming teams. And he decided to just get a season-ending surgery instead of getting traded to a lesser team. Which is crazy to think about, but that's the rumor out there. But right now, DeJounte is the biggest star. Right now, the trade talks are gold with DeJounte Murray. Um, you know, teams like the Lakers and the Heat are, are pretty, um, you know, not really, you know, chomping at the bits to get DeJounte. I think they all probably made offers and just hope to God the, the Hawks would bite, but I think the Hawks are probably going to stick with their team right now and just ride it out to the end of the year. And then maybe in the draft, they make a big-time trade of DeShante Murray, and maybe they pull up their team, maybe, and just go all in on the draft this year or next year. But I think that DeShante, in my opinion, which is really sad, does not get moved at all, which is very, very sad because, again, he is the biggest star available, and he might not even be available. Um, it says here that D'Angelo Russell also might just be returning um, as a Laker. Obviously, he's not really known as a positive asset. I wouldn't say it's really a negative asset, as you guys know. At least at one point in time, I was a pretty big D'Angelo Russell fan, especially during his Brooklyn Nets days that he had. Definitely one of my favorite players during that run, but uh, apparently he's also looking like not getting a lot of return on, on value, and of course, the Lakers needing some good guard play. He's definitely an X factor with the Lakers. Obviously, D'Lo can be that really good guard for them, but he's just so inconsistent. Um, it's really hard for him to get there. Let's see anything else. Um, Buddy Heald and, and Bogdan Bogdanovich. There are also players that may be getting moved recently. Um, it says here uh, Andrew Wiggins is getting some look at from other teams. Andrew Wiggins, obviously, of course, you know, very good uh, run there in in the finals a couple years ago, helping the the Warriors win that championship. Looks like the Bucks and the Mavs are eyeing Wiggins. Which wow, Andrew Wiggins on the Mavericks. That would be pretty wild. I think Dallas would be a pretty good fit for him, but I don't know how the Warriors are really much valuing um, anything that you can really get back from. Obviously, the Warriors are trying to still be in like a win-now mode around this Steph Curry area that's definitely coming to an end fairly soon. I think they're definitely trying to look for a place to elevate and in pursuit with that. I don't think they're looking to like get draft picks for Wiggins. I think they're trying to get another player that really can play with that core of teams. Um, anything else? Anything else. Uh, the Boston Celtics are going to be big time players in the trade market. Don't be surprised if their name is thrown around with every major trade because they are looking for a little bit more bench help. So, um, like we said, Buddy Heald, Bogdanovich, Lonnie Walker, um, a lot of those like random NBA 2K role players that are just 
penalty shootouts and stuff like that. Those are always like my favorite things uh, ever. And yes, I have been keeping up with the Premier League. I've been watching the highlights and things like that. So I've been watching it. But again, I, I'm not like watching full games. Um, like games for me start at like six o'clock in the morning, and I'm not trying to do that. So also, by the way, really sorry if you can hear my neighbor outside. Uh, for you that know, my neighbor is a yapper. He loves to talk, and he loves to talk with his door outside, like his front door. He loves to just leave it wide open all the time, and so he'll just be, like, going throughout his day, just talking like that is super annoying. Um, but yeah, anything else I really want to talk about, really? Um, I guess with the NHL going on right now, we'll take a look just, like, the very quick at, like, the top teams. Um, like, for the conferences, like, for the Eastern Conference, we have the Bruins and the Panthers and the Rangers kind of all in that sort of one, two, three range, which is actually kind of impressive. Um, and then for the Western Conference of the NHL, we have the Canucks kind of running away with the best record right now, I think, in the entire, yeah, in the entire NHL. Shout out to the Canu uh, Canucks, that's pretty interesting. Then you have the Dallas Stars, the Avalanche, and then my favorite team, the Golden Knights, and I think the LA Kings, currently seventh in the Western Conference, just fired their head coach, which, you know, they were a top team at one point in time in the NHL season and now not so much so it's kind of sad to see if I can currently check the AP standings um college AP standings um Duke is ranked ninth right now which is pretty impressive Arizona is ranked 8th um I'm trying to see uh yeah um UConn is still currently ranked as the number one team in the country only losing two games so far this year which is pretty impressive uh, Wisconsin is 11th, Illinois is 10th, Kentucky is 17th, which is kind of undermining. And then you have UNC at 3, Kansas at 4. So, definitely think there's going to be... Oh, and Purdue is also at number 2. They've kind of been flopping for 1 and 2. I think this year's March Madness is going to be uh, extremely, extremely close, and I am all about it. I cannot wait for March Madness. But anyways, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I love ya, love ya, love ya, love ya. And hopefully if you didn't finish this video your first time, your second time, your third time, just keep coming back. Just keep coming back and <laughs> watching to get through this video. I know uh, it's pretty much kind of a stagnant video, but we had a lot to talk about for some other major sports. And uh, definitely there will be another video sometime soon about this where we'll talk some other stuff. So definitely let me know down in the comments what other topics you guys want to talk about. Should I do... Um, article reading, try like do like games on here, so I talk just hypothetical stuff like building my favorite fantasy team or talk about my favorite sporting events. Would you guys want to do like more like ramblings about other sporting stuff, not just like current events of the NBA or the NFL or blah blah blah? Definitely let me know down in the comments about that. About what you guys want to listen to, I 